Hello everybody, my name is Eric, and today we're going to be trying out Windows Server 2003. We're going to put it through the same tests that we put uh, Windows XP and Windows 2000 through. Uh, we're going to connect it and expose it to the internet. Now, of course, using a server edition of Windows is much more reasonable to be exposed to the internet, because how else do you want your server to work? Now, I, in my understanding, most people using Windows servers are probably using them for Active Directory rather than for... Uh, internet hosting, but IIS exists, and some people do it. Famously, Elon Musk, uh, actually, the reason he was let go from PayPal is because he wanted to rebase the whole thing around Windows instead of Unix. Uh, luckily, they did not make we get a custom Windows XP logo. An interesting fact, for people who didn't know, is the Server 2003 is actually a bit newer than XP, and it was the code base that ultimately... Windows Vista would be based off of and reset to after the first iteration Longhorn uh, didn't pan out. So we can set our region, and we can put on our name. Wow, I guess, I guessed the license uh, on the first try. Obviously, I can't share that part on YouTube. Okay, select the licensing mode you want to do. Now, for those of you who've never used Windows Server before, uh, this is to do with client active access licenses, which is something for enterprises what always is kind of weird is it, it's not enforced. It's just if you're an enterprise, Microsoft will actually audit you to see if you have the right number of these. Now, something unfortunate I have noticed from looking and uh, looking at Shodan and looking at servers is a lot of Windows server providers, especially cheaper dedicated server hosts, which are mostly focused on Linux, will actually ship these servers by default with a very insecure configuration. Uh, network settings, uh, let's actually not do this right now, because if we do it right now, it's going to probably get infected before the setup even finishes, which would be pretty lame. And here we go, Windows Server 2003 Standard Edition. Now, interesting thing is that the resource limits are sold by SKU, and if you had this version, I think you couldn't use more than four CPU cores. I gave this VM eight, but it's just not going to use them. And, oh, oh right, yes, I got to actually put in the password I chose. And now we're into uh, Windows Server. So now uh, we can do the dangerous part. We can expose it. There's a second CD. I don't, I don't have the ISO for that. I hope we don't need it. I think that's, no, maybe it isn't. I thought that, I think that might be a different icon then. And we should now have internet. But we should also, by default, I think this comes with a firewall. But let, let's see what the Windows Server firewall settings look like. You can also run an Nmap on it from a different computer. Oh, yeah, yeah. And Windows Server comes with this really weird advanced enhanced security configuration, which basically means that Internet Explorer is unusable. Let's see if we can get... Okay, but Google works. So we can confirm that it's online, but it doesn't have any exposed ports. And it doesn't respond to pings according to nmap. I'm just going to try nmapping it with pn just to validate that if anything is online. Of course, given I don't have a real product here, I don't think activation is going to work. And I also don't think the surface for it are alive anymore. So I think we can, we don't need to waste time on that. So here is how you enable and disable the firewall in this version. So by default, it comes with secure firewall settings. So I'm guessing then that server hosts are probably the ones setting them to insecure if it's happening by default. But uh, all we have to do is do this. Or we could just forward some insecure ports, and that would also do it. And now this thing is no longer firewalled. And immediately, when I ran nmap, uh, everything was open, and it's responding to pings. So now it is just a waiting game to see who claims this free, wormable, supple little VM first. Okay, now let's see. Uh, it's been about an hour. Let's see if we've had any hits. Uh, on the, uh, I love, I love how it looks. Oh, con hose has already showed up. That's actually really interesting. So con hose does work on Windows Server 2003, doesn't work on 2000, and in my experience, it doesn't install on newer, even though it should theoretically. So let's see where con hose has gone. Now, I imagine, given that, as we saw in our deep dive analysis of Conhose, I'll have an info code up so you can see that if you haven't already seen it. Uh, given how Conhose works, I think it's in System32, that also should uh, patch this. Well, I just realized 
Is that is that really CSRS.exe? Uh no. No, it is definitely not. So uh that's also uh, living in our uh fake banking server. So I'm going to try and get a sysinternal suite on this so we can get a better idea of what's going on. And now we've got sysinternal suite ready to go. So the main ones that we want are process explorer and process monitor. Now whether process monitor will even work on this, but this will give us a good idea of what's going on. So uh, this is con hose. Uh, maybe it's not the same con hose. And this is the fake CSRS. Oh, it just died. So maybe it's had enough for now, or maybe it's done whatever it does. And Conhose has got... Okay. And it's still Microsoft Compilation. Oh, that's, that's, just, that's just lovely. And it's still in Windows Temp. So not much has changed about Conhose. What's kind of interesting is that... Oh, oh, my crawl office. Okay, this is also fake see who that's from. This kind of feels like it might be from the same... Uh, it's in a different folder as Conhose. I, I just love the names of these. It's so utterly ridiculous. Like, Microl Office. And now it's spawned uh, those DL there are those registries as well. And CD2 Chain, then I'm guessing, is legitimate because that's just opened this file. I'm also going to end map this again just to see if anything has changed. To see if, in fact, it has blocked the vulnerable service. MS info. I'm just copying these to the root so that if I do want to download them and actually analyze them, it's not going to cause me any trouble. Of course, because I'm using a residential connection, uh, these outgoing ports are blocked by my ISP, not necessarily by our server, but... This 9999 Abyss port is open, which wasn't originally open. And after trying to tell that it, it seems to have crashed whatever that server was doing. Uh, maybe it figured out it was going to get caught. So the only thing we can really do is try and download and analyze the actual incident. And after a bit of playing around with permissions, I was able to get into the folder I needed. And here we go. Uh, we've got both, and then we just download these two files. Now let's try putting this CSRS file and msinfo onto VirusTotal. So msinfo malgent, okay, it's, it's VM protected, so we're probably not getting into that. Riskware application, so pretty much everything be detected is just the VM protect. Uh, might be able to get a bit more from sandboxes and now let's try the second stage which not which doesn't have the protect trick bot okay so this is still this appears to be another dropper let's try putting ms info into triage and see what it has to say static analysis doesn't seem to think anything super interesting is here and we'll we'll give it windows 7 just to slightly increase the chance that it'll work but the real issue, because Windows backwards compatibility is good, so malware forwards compatibility is usually pretty good unless you enable security features. Okay, so it would appear that the first hit, uh, the MS info, uh, is not going to run in triage. It's it's well protected. It's VM protected. It's probably got a lot of anti VM. Now this one, okay, it's getting a three out of ten. Oh. Pi C. Okay. So this is this is Python malware. And there is a very real chance that we can get source code. There's some sort of debug message that popped up. Well, we'll be able to see it in the replay. It looks like it failed, so we can terminate this sandbox. Okay, it's UPX packed. And then it's got AC protect running under it. Okay, so they're probably not getting source code, but... Yeah, it's got some really old Python in there. But it seems like either it doesn't work on this version of Windows or it's detecting the sandbox. And it doesn't seem to be network-based. So I'm not going to be able to really use my usual tools. But I'm going to assume that this is pretty similar, maybe a bit more advanced uh, than Conhose. But it's doing roughly the same thing. It, it might uh, steal files, but 
really the main focus of these is to build some sort of botnet, which is why for these videos, I never leave the VM running longer than I need to. So that is going to be all for this video. Please leave a like if you enjoyed it. Uh, and you can also leave a comment and subscribe. And of course, uh, at least a few people are going to comment about how I somehow faked this one too, like they did for the other two. So if you're one of those people, uh, go ahead. And if you see any of those people, please feel free to make fun of them. So for now, bye.